Okay, this is the rear timing cover off. To get this off, you'll need to do there is a 13 millimeter here, a 13 millimeter here, and a 13 millimeter here, as well as an 8 millimeter here, 8 millimeter here, 8 millimeter here, 8 millimeter here, and another one here. And then this whole thing will come off, and uh, you'll be left with this. So, as you can see, we've got everything else in place here. So next up is going to be to pull off the uh, viscous heater. I already undid one bolt here to help get the timing cover out of the way. And uh, there's another one down here. And then the viscous heater will come off. You'll need to undo the plug, which I'd previously undone over here. And then this viscous heater will come out of the way. If you haven't already, these two uh, hose connections will need to be undone. With the viscous heater out of the way, we'll have easy access to the water pump and easy access to the thermostat. So I'll go ahead and get that out of the way. And then next up will be thermostat and water pump. Okay, so there's the viscous heater out of the way, and uh, now you can see the water pump down in here. And we'll see, we'll undo, when we take the water pump off, the way we're going to do it this time is uh, it's just to take the front half of the water pump and leave the rear half. If you do this, you only want to use a new OEM water pump, uh, that way they'll mate up perfectly. And the only seal in between these two parts is an O-ring. So when you buy a new OEM water pump, it'll come with the front half and the back half. And uh, you just take the front half off of that new one and bolt it on, and it'll save quite a bit of trouble digging into all of this stuff. Now this time, because we are doing a thermostat, it would be a little bit easier to do the whole thing. But once again, it just saves us a little bit of time just to get in and do the bolts on the front of the water pump. So I'm going to go ahead and get the thermostat out, and then uh, pull out the water pump, and we'll take a look at those. Okay, so we've got the water pump off, we've got the thermostat off. Here you can see the thermostat bolt pattern. There's two bolts on the left, which are very hard to see and not fun to get to, but generally you come in just right in this way with a long extension and just uh, just get right past the uh, intake air hose here. So just come in with the 10 millimeter on the extension and you can get to those. Uh, the front one's uh, just pretty much the same procedure, but you don't have to be as long with it and you can see it. The two in the back are pretty hard to see and you'll be better off feeling for them. You can see here's what's left of the uh, water pump housing. So this is the old housing, we'll leave it there. Uh, you can see a little bit of dirt got into it. But otherwise, there's no moving parts in this. It's sealed up at the block, it's sealed at the back. So um, we'll just leave those sealed. There's no reason we should have to replace any of those since we're not messing with them. And then the only thing is it will have a new seal right in here with an O-ring. So uh, let's go take a look at the new part that you get. So here you can see we've got a the old water pump and a new water pump, nice and shiny. These are both uh, VM units. They show in the casting the VM, the manufacturer of the engine. So even though you'll get this from Chrysler, it is a genuine VM part. Um, so you can see this is the part that we're leaving on the block. So there's uh, this, this back here is the, uh, the outlet that goes to the radiator, and this comes from the block. When you order the water pump, it will come with an O-ring, so as long as they don't lose that O-ring, you shouldn't need to buy another one if you're going to use this whole rear housing. Now in this case, the way I like to do it, because it saves on labor and I don't see any reason to have to go through all the trouble to replace this stuff, is to uh, undo these bolts and then we'll take this and we'll bolt it in place of this. So this is the old one, I mean actually in pretty good shape. You can see there's, uh, there's an O-ring right in here that sits just right in this lip. And so I'll just need to carefully put in this O-ring, well the new O-ring, into uh, into the old housing, or I guess in this new housing, make sure it's sitting in here properly before I go ahead and put in this new front part of the water pump. So I'm going to go ahead and take out these bolts and get that o-ring in place. I'll probably put a little bit of grease just to kind of hold it in place while I'm putting it up. I'll clean up the surface over there on the engine and uh, then we'll bolt this in and we'll be back to putting in the uh, thermostat. Okay, so you can see here's the new water pump. The new O-ring is in place, uh, came out pretty nice. You can see there's a little bit of uh, white lithium grease still on there holding in that O-ring. Sometimes the O-ring likes to stick in the other housing and have to peel it off and kind of get it to go back in place. But in this case, it stayed in there nice and I didn't have to fight it too much. So you can see there's the old one, comparison, both the same part. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and grab that new piece and we'll toss it right in up here. I've got this all cleaned up and ready to go, so I'll put that in, and uh, just got to make sure you clock it correctly, 
and put it in. A couple different link bolts should be able to figure it out. And then I'll go on and clean up the mating surface for the thermostat and bolt it in. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the uh, new thermostat on. I've got the water pump on. And uh, I'm ready to go ahead and put on the rear cover and then put on the new timing belt. So you see, in this case, I ended up using RTV to make a seal. Uh, on this particular gasket, uh, a lot of gasket material stayed behind, so it's very difficult to get in and clean it off. Got as much off as I could, and then uh, went ahead and used RTV. So in this case, I didn't use the uh, the paper gasket that paper gasket that comes with the thermostat. So your mileage may vary. I just did one yesterday, came off completely clean from the head itself, and uh, was able to use a paper gasket just fine. This one didn't want to come off. It was very attached to the engine. Um, so uh, up next is the rear cover and then the timing belt. So here we are. We got the rear cover back on. We have the uh, viscous heater back on. Thermostat's back on. Water pump is in place. We're all uh, bolted down. And next up, I'm going to go grab the uh, cam gear, set them in place, put the uh, cam gear holder in place too, and uh, we'll torque down the bolts for the cam gears. And then we can uh, move on and put on the uh, timing belt tensioner and then the timing belt. So I've got the uh, gears back in place. They're not torqued down yet. And as you can see, there's nothing that keys them in one place. Now, I'm putting them back and I'm aligning them like uh, with the, the marks I put on just for the sole reason of making sure that I keep the right number of teeth in between the belt. As you can see, there's a little bit of play here. And I could go that way or that way. And if I did this on both of the gears, say like this a little bit and like this a little bit, I could end up with one less tooth in between them than I'm supposed to, and everything can wind up a little bit off. So I'm going to put them back and just keep them aligned with them here. The other thing is, when you put on the, uh, the cam gear uh, holder, this guy should keep my cam gears in place with the correct amount of timing between them. So I'm just going to run these teeth out. So now I've got this on. I've got my marks in place and I'm going to run up these knobs here. You can see it's going to go up into the valley right in there. So there's one and then here's this other one. I'll run it on up. Okay, so now the cam gear tool is holding these two things in place so I can torque down these nuts. And then, see I've got my marks lined up, so I know I've got the correct timing between the two cams. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those down. I will put on a couple of new uh, idlers here. I will get the new uh, tensioner in place, and then I'll go ahead and start getting the belt in place. Okay, so we got all of our pulleys back on, our idlers back on, and now I'm starting to get the belt. <clears throat> so usually you're going to start by working your way around the top. Now if you'll see what I got for tension here, this is about right. This indicates that you don't have uh, one extra tooth in between the two gears. I'm still lined up according to my marks, which are here and here. And uh, what I usually do is, in this case, I'm using a couple pieces of a broken paint stir stick. Uh, sometimes a little screwdriver work. Basically, you just want to find something to kind of wedge in here. Don't damage the belt so wood's nice because it's soft and it'll keep this from slipping because if there's not a lot of tension on it, which there's nothing down this way, you can actually just pop one tooth over and then you got it loose here and you got to start all over again. It's a little bit difficult to get this upper part on, but give it a couple of tries and uh, you'll eventually get it right. Just make sure to check your tension here. I'm going to move on down and I've got the, uh, the injection pump pulley kind of set in place right. You can see it's lined up pretty well. And I'm going to go on down and work my belt around, and then I'm going to move on down to the crank. And the crank is the last thing that we'll do usually. And it's a bit of a trick, and uh, once I get the rest of this on, I'll show you what I'm going to do for that. So here's the problem. We've got everything around in place. It's all properly lined up, but we can't get this new belt to slip over. There's just, it's just not going to happen. 
and people try doing different things like leaving these loose and pulling them out or doing this all and then getting this in and those are all kind of they won't work if the problem is down here you've got too much too much belt right here so if I go through and I get this on and now I've got the belt locked on to the crank down here you can see there's still just too much tension basically we have one extra tooth right there so what I'm gonna do is go down here put my uh, 21 millimeter on the crank I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise back a bit then I'm gonna with my other hand I'll reach down with my right hand and push on the belt then I'm gonna turn it back clockwise and this will pull this tight so we have the correct tension here now this is where I want to keep an eye on my uh, on my timing marks so if you come down here you can see my timing mark is still lined up there just fine the problem is uh, when I when I start turning it back it's gonna be off now there's a little bit of play down in the pin so even with the pin in place I can turn the crank a little bit so I'm gonna go turn it counterclockwise a little bit get the timing belt uh, t caught on the teeth over on the right there and then I'm gonna turn it back clockwise pulling that tight so there's not any slack over there with that done I'll have the proper amount of teeth in between the two and then I'll be able to slip it up over the new uh, tensioner it's still really tight and it's a really really tough squeeze but this is the way you have to do it so the time belts all back in place like it should be uh, everything's tightened down except for the tensioner. Uh, as you can see, I've got my timing marks realigned all the way around. Come down here, you can see my crank timing mark is still lined up just fine. So I've got good tension. If you've got more than this amount of slack, you can't see it. If you've got more than this amount of slack over here, then you've got one extra tooth over here. So if it's not like this, you need to go through, turn the crank counterclockwise, reach down with your hand and push the belt on, and then turn it clockwise until your mark is aligned and you've got this much tension. You'll want to keep one hand on the belt, use your other hand to turn the pulley here, and then once it's tight, keep holding it on, and then reach over and try to slide that bugger on. Uh, it can be really hard to do sometimes depending on the belt and exactly how everything is. This time it was more difficult than others. Other times it goes a lot quicker on the first try you get it. So, alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tension the belt properly and then I'll show you what that looks like. Alright, the belt is properly tensioned now. Once you've got the tensioner in the correct place, tighten down the 10 millimeter on the tensioner. So to show you what that alignment looks like, if you take a look right in here, you'll see there's a notch right there. There's a notch and then there's that black spring bar. So if you kind of look at it, work it straight on, you see those two are aligned. So turn that notch until the spring bar is right in the middle of the two. And that's when you know you've got the tensioner set right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off the cam gear holder. I'm going to turn it over by hand a couple times, make sure it feels good. And then I'm going to hook back up the battery and uh, do a quick crank up and make sure it sounds good. All right, so we'll start it up running. You can see everything's going good. No weird noises other than normal diesel weird noises. So I'd say we're good to uh, go ahead and put everything back together. All right, another timing belt almost completed. So I've been working away here and uh, I've got it mostly back together in terms of the front cover. So I've got everything in place. I'm ready to go ahead and put the serpentine belt back on. I've got a new one here I'll put on. Uh, just as a reminder, this idler and this idler are reverse threads when you put them in. This one is normal threads. So I'll get that uh, serpentine belt put on and then I can go ahead and start uh, reassembling the rest of everything else. All right, there we have it. We got uh, everything back together, running nicely. Got uh, both Samcos installed now. We got the uh, coolant reservoir pretty well topped off, so we'll drive that around a bit before watching the level and probably top it off with a little bit of water. Otherwise, everything's back together. One more time belt done. And that's how you do a time belt on a Jeep Liberty Turbo Diesel.